nyilvánvaló, hogy mindenféle útkeresés a jelenlegi állapotokból elképzelhetetlen a kelet-európai történelmi múlt beleértve, persze nem csak a jugoszlávot, meg a kelet-közép-európait, hanem a szovjetet is. Tehát elképzelhetetlen, hogy ennek a történelmi tapasztalatait ne dolgozzuk fel, ne értsük meg, mert enélkül az történik, ami ma a világban történik, hogy a valóban eltűnőben van. Hát ha nincs mondani valója a világnak, akkor el fog tűnni. Na most mi ezt a mondani valót itt próbáljuk erősíteni, és nagyon érdekes volt az előadás a tapasztalatok átgondolása szempontjából. Ez még nem a kérdések ideje, de már most jelzem neked, kedves Rászkó, hogy az a probléma, ami az osztályhelyzet és az osztálytudat között, mint ellenmondás fennállt, és a, a Lukács erre valóban reflektált, felveti azt a kérdést is, hogy vajon amikor az államszocializmus megbukott, akkor szerte Kelet-Európába, including a Szovjetunió, sehol nem lépték meg a dolgozó osztályok az állami tulajdon, mint sajátjukat. Ebből szerintem egy csomó tapasztalatot mi még nem szűrtünk le. De majd visszatérünk a problémára, csak jelzem, hogy itt ez megfogalmazódott jó kérdés. Akkor lépjünk tovább, amit akkor tiéd a szó, ismertes a témádat, mert ez elég eredeti kérdés volt, és nagyon kevés kutatás van e téren. Bár speciál az eszméletre Szuzán Cimmerman néhány tanulmány itt a gendert és a szocializmus összefüggését, de én gondolom, hogy eredeti nézőpontot ismerhetünk meg, úgyhogy megkérem az Anitát, hogy szintén 20 percben vezesse elő az előadását. Angolul. Hello, first of all, thank you for inviting me. So, uh, I'm going to talk about the talk. Do you hear me? Yes. No. Okay. It's on. It's on. Okay. So uh, my main topic is something our government is extremely allergic to, namely gender and communism. So I'm going to talk about uh, gender politics and uh, the relations to anti-communism in Eastern Europe, since many academic work has been banned or self-censored lately. So I think it's uh, also very important to talk about the women's question both in state socialism and after the fall of state socialism in Eastern Europe. So let me just start. The two most important aspects when talking about uh, post-state uh, socialism gender politics in Eastern Europe is the recent rise of radical anti-feminist and also anti-women movements across the continent and of course the experience of poverty caused by free, free market fundamentalism known as neoliberalism. Was the emancipatory project of state, state socialism successful or has the market brought any social change? This is my main question, so let's start. First, I would like to talk about gender relations before uh, 89, because for many political and economic uh, reasons, women at the time were included in paid work and in educational institutions. Regarding these countries, women's labor force, force participation rates exceeded 80%, so women worked full-time interrupted by short maternity leaves. Also for the first time in the 70s, women's participation in educational institutions re reached equity, and by the 90s, woman, women's level of education equaled that of men. Nevertheless, the woman question was far from solved, since women faced workforce sex segregation in low prestige jobs and agricultural work, mostly in Poland and Romania, and earned uh, significantly less than men. Uh, it's very important to, know, to note that because of the system, the wealth power was channeled to direct wealth redistribution, not much of wages, also the socialist emancipation project, gender inequality regarding paid work was smaller in socialist countries than it was in Western capitalist societies at the time. Policies for women's emancipation focused mostly on paid work and employment education, which resulted in a highly educated female workforce. 
There are also areas where change did not occur, namely the share of domestic labor and child care. Women were defined as both workers and mothers, yet men rarely, were rarely regarded as workers and fathers. Although communist ideologues sometimes encouraged husbands to be more engaged, but altogether men refused to change their domestic habits. This resulted in the fact that women were doing a approximately seven hours more work per week compared to men. On the other hand, the woman question under state socialism was regarded as some sort of discrete matter instead of a base for an egalitarian society. State socialism praised, praised the woman as a heroic worker, therefore full-time housewives faced disapproval and low status both socially and economi economically Many socialist ideologues argued that non-working women are forced into the sta a status of being social parasites. Besides the many factors that caused the fall of the Soviet Union, we can't pass by the fact that state socialism never exceeded in, a, uh, uh, in patriarchal nature. In addition, reproductive freedom varied in different countries. For example, abortion abortion was legal in most countries except for Romania. In the dictatorial ethno-nationalist Romania, abortion was a criminal act and contraceptives were available, so women's health were damaged uh, significantly. Another important notion is that state socialism was committed to the representation of women with certain quotas to women's organizations, trade unions, and political parties. After 80 Nine, the number of female representatives in Eastern Europe uh, parliaments dropped significantly, which was a real drawback regarding existing rights for women, not to mention proposing new rights. In state socialism, the woman was both worker and mother, but also a citizen. Women had three major tasks, to be engaged in active political life, paid work, and family. It's also, it's also crucial to note that the access to Western feminist theory and movements was very limited at the time in most Eastern European countries, and that leaves a question whether the recent rejection of feminist movements has anything to do with re revisiting Western feminist concepts. Following the co collapse uh, of state socialism, from uh, 89 to 92, everything changed radically in women's experiences. As the labor force changed in many countries, women were laid off despite of their qualification, which was often higher than of men. For example, in Romania, Bulgaria, Poland, and Russia, female uh, unemployment rates hit all-time high, and the struggle of women to find jobs increased significantly. In result, uh, women were forced to rely, to rely on their families and husbands more. Facing the urge to compete with men on the labor market, ma many women postponed marriage and childbearing. Zsuzsa Ferge also argued that poverty was still prevalent in many state socialist countries, yet still after 90, the number of poor people dramatically increased with no clear understanding on the ways women were represented in poverty. Ferge suggested that there is no gender poverty gap in Hungary, for instance, but in countries like Romania and Russia, the gender poverty gap is higher. The main issue here is that the welfare state can prevent women from falling into poverty, since they are most responsible for household and child care duties. Their uh, poverty assistance programs are crucial. In countries such as Russia and Romania, the welfare state provides a lot less help for the poor. In post-90 Romania, women are more excluded from the labor market and receive very little help from the state, which keeps a huge proportion of women in hopeless poverty. This condition resulted in a devastating phenomenon and a major local social issue regarding female Romanian immigrant workers. Today, many research and report project, projects prove that a significant number of Romanian female workers are forced into slavery, not just wage slavery, but actual slavery, in most parts of Western Europe. 
escort participation of women in mainstream politics in Eastern Europe, the marginalization of women from the public sphere is obvious. Following the revolutions of 89 in newly formed democratic governments, women were almost invisible. Also, no political parties appear to protect women's rights. Countries such as Hungary and Romania does not have a government ministry for women's affairs particularly. Female representatives in the parliament were a huge loss in the process. The withdrawal of female representatives was the most radical in Romania, where the percentage fell from 34% to 5% in uh, 90. There was also much higher involvement of women in trade union activities. Of course, there are multiple reasons for the lack of women's visibility and political activities, such as political parties, <coughs> refusal to put female candidates on top of electoral lists because of they fear they might lose votes. Another reason in the flourishing anti-communist atmosphere of post-communist countries that imposed that women had way too many rights under state socialism. To support their nationalist agenda of reproduction, women are forced to rediscover their feminine role in, in the private sphere and leave men looking after their interest in the public sphere. To put it this way, they let society be, believe politics is simply not for women. For a woman to get elected in a political role, she simply has to be twice as clever as a man. Just a brief example of changing gender relations after 89 in Hungary, electoral advertising appeared in Hungary in 90. This adver advertisement of the Hungarian Democratic Forum, MDF, was subordinating women to the maternal role in the name of national interest. In the last days of the election campaign, posters of ideal Hungarian womanhood have appeared showing a pregnant woman gazing at the sky. The main problem with this symbol is that it reduces women from political beings to their simple biological role as mothers, and also it expresses nationalist aspirations. Eventually, the total rejection of state socialism, the past, and increasing anti-communist feelings had led to the rejection of socialist policies on emancipation and of feminism too, in a faulty equation of the two. An important question remains whether the voices of women who are silenced by the moral agendas of the church, the male-dominated set of political priorities, or by the market forces reducing women's role to consumers. In Hungary, for instance, following 1998, many anti-feminist lobbies caused difficulties regarding women's rights. For example, Hitler, a published male politician, Jula Fekete, has claimed that feminists are the murderers of mothers, so they are to blame for social decline. In response, Anike Bolobash has replied that feminists work for the benefit of both men and women for the autonomous human being, and she expressed that the main concerns of feminists are such social issues as overworked, exploited, and exhausted Hungarian women. Bolobash has also expressed that the main task of Hungarian feminism is the spiritual and social liberation of women and men from oppressive hierarchical relationships. Another important event regarding the conflict of gender politics and anti-communism in Hungary was pointed out by sociologist Maria Adami. She argued that the socialist woman's emancipation is associated with the previous regime and political elite, therefore it is widely discredited and itself, and itself provided an excuse to shut out even the thought of feminism out of the country. Returning to Christian conservatism, this might be reasonable. Susha Béres was one of the founders of the, one of the first feminist mass movement of Hungary, following the fall of state socialism, the Hungarian feminist network, Magyar Feminista Hálózat, Béres expressed her concerns about the state of women in the rapidly growing poverty, low-paid jobs, and extremely impressive political scene dominated by men. The founding meeting took uh, place in June 90, 
and the main discussion was about whether or not the term feminist alienates potential supporters since feminists were branded as anti-male, anti-family, neurotic, and so on. Uh, the anti-feminist tension in Hungary not just prevailed but intensified. By the mid-92, uh, the network had somewhat 50 members and it was based in Budapest without any links on the countryside. Their activity was focused on collecting signatures to oppose government attempts to ban abortion and demonstrations in support of Poland's abortion rights. Also, the network has expressed anti-military and anti-war feelings and opposed the Gulf War. Their statement, uh, statement was based on the belief that feminists should advocate solidarity and non-violent cooperation instead of power struggles and competition. Another important aspect of the activities of this early feminist movement in Hungary comes from the side of academia in attempt to establish women's studies program in Hungarian universities. In addition, the first feminist group was set up within the Democratic Union of Scientific and Research Workers before the fall of socialism, and the seminar series of women and society was held at Szeged University by Professor Enrique Borovás. Also in Szeged, the Alba Group was set up in 91 by Rita Szilágyi and her husband, Zsolt Koknitsky, as a nationwide organization including feminists and green activists. Eventually, the Alba Women's Workshop set up a women's refuge with SOS hotline and temporary accommodations for women, since, since there was no organizations to, to support even the smallest women's initiatives. In conclusion, research has demonstrated there is a radical anti-feminist conservative turn in general attitude in post-communist societies. There's also a pattern of growing anti-feminist movements from Russia to Poland, motivated by nationalist patriarchy with some cases that sentence the key figures of these movements for, for hate speech targeting women. New political regimes use references to traditional gender roles to indicate the break with the country's communist past. So there are in fact correlations between anti-communist and anti-feminist agendas. In the post-state socialist region, this conservative turn in gender relations is blamed for the, the declining numbers of female workforce, the inequal division of domestic labor, and of course the extremely low level of women's representation in the parliament. There's also a massive lack of political action and organization for women, especially in Hungary. Thank you.